Hello everyone and welcome back to That Sales Show. I'm Donna Valente, Coach V if you will, and today our topic is going to be on the formula of success. And I have with me a wicked smart, brilliant CEO of Slice, and she's going to review with us, uh, you know, a couple major things to consider around um, engaging uh, your clients with value, uh, how do you message to them with value, how do you identify your ICP to make sure that you're messaging to the right people, how do you know how to get to know your clients so that you know the right messaging, mm -hmm. and I think the last thing is um, managing the sales cycle. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we also have engaging, how to engage influencers in the in the sales process. So I'd like to introduce you to Cass Bailey so much. Thank you so much for coming Thanks on for the show. Me, Donna. How are you today? I'm great. You're know, great. We just met her baby out in the lobby and we lost a lot of time chatting that's why we're a little bit late <laughs> so Cass why don't you tell us what slice communication does so slice really focuses on helping companies have two-way conversations that lead to growth um, we focus primarily on public relations so having conversations with editors to get you covered we do a lot of social media and so that means uh, LinkedIn it also means Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, etc. And because good social media is a back and forth. And finally, we do email marketing. And email marketing is really about creating something where you're uh, putting something in somebody's inboxes and they're replying to you. Right. That's awesome. That's a. I try to uh, get a you know kind of like a snapshot and be able to say that. But I'm glad that you said it for me because I would have failed miserably there. So um, all right. So let's get started. We only have 30 minutes, so mm -hmm. and it flies by pretty quickly. So yes. let's get started with the question of defining the, the ideal customer. And how, how do you go about doing that to make sure that you're doing it properly? I think the keyword there that you mentioned, Donna, is ideal. And a lot of times when we start working with CEOs and with marketing VPs and sales VPs, they talk about the customer that they have today. And that's the mistake because the customer you have today isn't always the customer that you want to have. Mm. It's not the customer that's going to give you the highest profitability. It's not the customer that's going to refer you other customers. It's not necessarily the customer that's going to help you grow the way that you want to. And so we need to get out of this mindset of what we have and start thinking about like what we want. So that kind of defies the you want referenceable accounts. Right? It does a little bit. And the accounts that you have today hopefully will be the ones that help you get the accounts that you want in the future. But if you just keep doing what you're doing, you're going to get the same result. And a lot of uh, companies and CEOs that we work with come to us or they need help because they don't want the same thing over and over right. again. They want so they, need, new. New orga they need, need organic growth. They do. They need organic growth. But they also a lot of times need to think about new markets, new industries, new types of customers. Um, and they don't know how how to start to reach those people. Why don't you tell us how they start to reach us? <laughs> well, sure. So, so I think what's really important with people today is, and, and we wrote a white paper on this topic, um, the buyers from corporations are getting younger and younger. Ah, uh, yes. Right? Generation X is a very small generation. Mm -hmm. What that means is that the so-called millennials, which basically is co word for anyone under 40 today, yeah. they're accelerating into management and decision-making yes. uh, um, positions very quickly. Yeah, they so, save three to five years. They're going to be in the buying Three uh, to five authority. years, right? They're yeah. going to make the decision. Mm -hmm. And some of them, a lot of them, are already making those decisions. Yeah. The way that you market to and sell to those people is a little different. The research that we have shows that they tend to do 12 steps of online research before they ever take your call, mm -hmm. before they ever return your call, before they ever answer your yeah. inquiry around sales. Yeah. So think about those 12 steps. What does that look like? How does your company show up when they're looking yeah. for you over and over and over again right. before they ever agree to talk with you? Yeah. So how do you go about defining ideal? So I think the first thing that you need to think about is not just their demographics, right? You might know what the job title is. You, you might think that you know. You might think that you know the size of the company. You might think that you know the industries that they're in. And that's great and that's important. 
But we know that everybody we're selling to, they're all humans, right? So we need to start thinking about- Today they are. Today they are, right. They might be robots in the future. It's entirely possible. And when it comes time to sell to robots, we'll have a different conversation. Okay. Maybe my daughter will be on then and she yes. can talk to you about yes. selling to robots. Exactly. But today we're selling to people, right. right? And so if we think about people, they all come with psychographics. They all have desires, they all have wants, they all have fears, they all have concerns. Yeah. The way that they get news and information and the way that they process it and think about it is different. Mm -hmm. And so when we're thinking about our ideal client type, or ICT as you say, we need to not just think about um, their demographics, but like their psychographics. Who are they, what do they care about, what drives them? Mm -hmm. And how do we find that? Well, beside hiring you guys. Well, <laughs> right, there's a lot of ways to do this, right? The first thing we might wanna do is spend a little time talking with them, find out and ask them these questions. Like, so where do you get news and information? What is it about um, what we had to say that was compelling to you? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, the people who decided not to buy from you, that's also a conversation that you want to have. Yeah. A lot of times I feel like we as salespeople go to them and say, well, who did you choose instead? Mm -hmm. And that's fine, mm -hmm. but that doesn't give us that much information. What yeah. tells us more is like what, what went into their decision-making process yeah. and who they are as people. Yeah. The other thing that I will say is that there's so much information about humans on the internet right now, yeah. but a lot of times we don't spend the time or the money or the effort to look at it, right? Yeah. To research it, to understand it. Yeah. Um, we were working with the client. And people don't know how to consume it. No, they don't know. They don't, they don't, know. don't know what to look for, yeah. right? So, and we all live in this world where our LinkedIn shows some of our personal and some of our professional. Our Twitter shows some of our personal and some of our professional. Mm -hmm. So for me, for instance, if you were to check out my Twitter, you would see that I um, really care about certain causes. I really care yeah. about literacy. Yeah. It's very important to me. Oh, wow. Well, if you were selling to me, you might want to connect with me on that level. Yeah. And then that creates a, a trust. Yeah. Um, that we wouldn't have otherwise if you just knew yeah. that I was the CEO of a business in Old City. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I get that. All right. So the next, from here we go to um, how do we engage the influencers, influencers in the process? Okay. So this is a great question. That we're going to have to come back for. Right after, right after the break? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, folks. We'll be back in a minute. Thank you so much celebration. Welcome to Rod's Steak and Seafood Grill in nearby Morristown, New Jersey. Bring your appetite and feed your passion. Independent living for seniors age 62 and over, People Inc. offers safe, maintenance free apartments across Western New York. The affordable rent is income based. For more information, call People Inc. Senior Living at 817 9090. In a world where bankers have lost all interest, where robots and fat cats rule our fortunes, one woman Hi. will stand up and strive to do the impossible. Be treated like a person. Friends and neighbors will join her quest. Ordinary people will band together against the forces of corporate greed. And together, they will form Philadelphia Federal Credit Union, already in a neighborhood near you. Assurance. It's a word, a touch, a look. Welcome back, everyone. This is Donna Valente on That Sales Show, and sorry for that abrupt ending there. Um, we're coming back, and we're talking about how do we engage influencers. So let me first start with the word influencers, because it is a very trendy word 
in social media. But what we mean is centers of influence, which I think is a more traditional sales uh, word. Why can't we just keep it the same? Right? We should. <laughs> Why okay, do we have centers of influence. Let's talk about those people. <laughs> so many people we talk to, when I ask them, like, how do you get business? They tell me, oh, it's all word of mouth. It's all referrals. What that means is that somebody is referring your work. Who are those somebodies? Right? Those people are so powerful, more powerful today than they have ever been, I think, in the history mm -hmm. of sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because everybody's getting bombarded with so much information yeah. that they don't know what's good and what's not. So they look to people, right? To humans. We're back to that. Yeah. To tell them what's good and what's not good. Yeah. So think about like if you were to be working with somebody and you were asking them like, oh, I need to hire a new PR and social media company, right? You'd ask them like, oh, who do you think is good? Well, chances are they know a bunch of us because there are a lot of us out there, right? Mm -hmm. But if I had um, contacted with contacted them recently, and if they heard from me on an email or I'm having a webinar, I have something going on, chances are I would be the one that would be referred to you. Right. So engaging influencers is all about staying top of mind, giving them actual tools to, to refer you business. Mm -hmm. Now that's marketing, right? Yeah. So we need to make sure that they have a steady flow of events, of content, of insights, of research, of surveys, of curated news and information so that it's valuable to them in making a great referral. And that's all right. about right. marketing and communications. Yeah. And how do you know what that person's, what's going to resonate for that person who's in your circle of influence? So a couple of things. One, you could ask them, but chances are that they don't even know what's going to resonate for them, ah. which is why you have to have a plan that has diversity in it. Yep. It might be an event. They might like to go out for cocktails because that's how they network best, yeah. but it might be an ebook or it might be participating in a survey, right? You need to have diversity so that you give every Everybody who's an influencer with mm -hmm. you the opportunity to help you sell. The other thing that's interesting is that not everybody consumes information the same way. So some people like every time they log in their LinkedIn to see something about you or something that you've got coming up, some people prefer to consume it in email. So yeah. we need to have diversity of content and diversity of, of uh, delivery yeah. and delivery channels yeah. in order to keep all of our influencers engaged so that we stay top of mind with them. That's a, a wicked good example. I mean, I really think that, um, but there's a lot of companies that don't have the the content, they don't have the plan in place, they don't know what to do, um, well, and, frankly, and they might not have the money to do it. Is, is it there's, there's low cost ways of achieving that. There are some low cost ways. The first thing that I would say is that you can't depend or you can't um, require the salespeople to do it for themselves, right? Salespeople are out there making the calls, getting the opportunities, mm -hmm. staying connected, and that's really important. Mm -hmm. But they need a support system. They're going to be more effective if they have a support system. Yeah. So tools that enable and encourage email automation, some of them are very inexpensive. That's a great way to stay connected with influencers, is to set mm. up an automation that says every three weeks, my influencers get something from me. And if you sit down and plan it out, you'll be in a much better position to like put something out there that, that's credible and, and real and useful. So email automation tools can be helpful as long yeah. as you don't make yourself look like a robot. Yeah. That's the big mistake. Yeah. Just blasting the same out, the, the same thing out to the same people, even though it's not going to be relevant to them. Then you lose trust. So these tools yeah. are valuable, but they're also potentially dangerous. It all comes back to being really thoughtful about how you use them. Yeah. And what's, you know, what's coming to mind for me, and I, I, in my work, I see a yeah. lot of sales reps not working with a territory plan. Yeah. And so uh, at BDU, one of our big things is, and that was Business Development University, is, is that we have in the uh, territory planning, mm -hmm. you have to hit your circle of influences. Yeah. And I don't think that leadership adds that in as a metric. No. Now we have that in a, it a quad allows you to do that. Yeah. Um, because you can build your lists and say, okay, this is my list of influencers. Yeah. And I, I do think it's important. I think we've gotten, we talk about networking in a very like yeah. isolated, hey, did you get out this week? Right. But it really should be, are you touching these people? Not only we're giving you the support here with the automation, but yeah. you need to go out and touch these people and make it a part of your 30, 60, 90 day plan. Yeah, so Donna, let me ask you, how often do you review your territory plan? Me? Yeah. 
I mean, I live by the 30, 90, 60. I, right. I have so every to. every 90 days, yeah. you review your territory plan. Um, but not when I have my lists. They, mm -hmm. they have to be, if they're a part of my top, yeah. so I have three buckets. Right. And in, in Itaquad, it allows me to have three tabs. Yeah. So I can have, you know. So you review it all the time. Even as a sales rep, when I was working with other CRMs, yeah. I had my top 15. Mm -hmm. And I knew who I wanted to touch that I can lean in. Um, like in the, I sold educational technology. Yeah. I knew who my strategic accounts were. Right. I knew, listen, it was on a piece of paper. I know who I have to call, you know, but that's because I'm, I'm a human interactor. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm always going to be the human touch. I love technology because it saved me for productivity. But um, I believe that social media has given us a false sense of uh, connection. So many people use it so poorly. They think yeah. that social media is LinkedIn, that yeah. it is yeah. Facebook. But yeah. the first word in social media is social, mm -hmm. which means that it's about people. Mm -hmm. I keep going back to this, right? What's going to be compelling for one group of people isn't going to be compelling for somebody else. Yeah. So we need to understand those humans. Yes. And then talk with them, not yeah. at them. Yeah. And I think we should build it into, you know, the planning because if you're just measuring on activities and conversations, you're not getting the full picture. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's awesome. I, I, that was great feedback. I just love you. Thank so you. Love the you next too. thing um, yeah. I think we, that's complicated, yes. is um, managing that sales cycle and mm -hmm. how some of these other things come into play when you are managing the sales cycle. So what are the best practices that you employ yeah. um, for managing the sales cycle? So we think about the sales cycle like most people think about the sales cycle. However, there are some things um, that if we're listening well, we can use to trigger and to accelerate the sales cycle. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if we, when we are talking with a company, we want to do a lot of listening. So we might set up Google alerts and we might be tracking their social media to see if oh. they've got something important coming up. I love that. Right. So it's so easy and it's cheap and it's free, right? So yeah. for instance, if, <laughs> if a company starts talking about this big conference they have coming up in a month or two, that might be a great opportunity to say, hey, I heard that you're doing this. Can we chat a little bit more? Because yeah. now might be a great time for my CRM to be put in right. place right before the conference. So you're, you're becoming a thought partner at that point. Right. You're trying to help them solve the problem yeah. that they don't even know they have that's yet. Right. That's and right. that's all about listening. Yeah. The other thing that we found really accelerates the sales cycle is listening for their competition. What are the competitors doing that might make them jealous enough to want to try to catch up or step ahead of their competitors? Yes. Right? That's urgency. Man. And that's urgency. Yeah. And that's yeah. all about listening, yeah. listening to their competitor social channels, listening to what their competitors are putting out. And that sort of uh, jealousy sometimes can be the most compelling message that you ever deliver to somebody yeah. as long as their psychographics show us that they are a competitive person yeah and that they have an interest in competition yeah right and how do we know that well we can look at a lot of things both in terms of their professional what they put out professionally and what they put out personally uh this is not a plug for anyone in particular but um crystal nose is one of those demographic things where mm -hmm. you could type in somebody's name and you know their title yeah and it pulls up kind of like a mini disc yeah and like how does this person like to communicate because they're following the social footprint for you yeah it's kind of like right reportive does some of that too oh right? is that right there are some really fantastic tools yeah. Yeah. that will help us learn about people and and so we need to know all this as we put together the marketing strategy right but this is marketing's job right marketing supports sales in this way yeah. It can't always be sales job. That's yeah. a really heavy bucket to carry. <laughs> it is. Especially it when is. you're writing proposals. Thank you. Did you hear quotes. that, everybody? It's really hard for sales to do. That's where <laughs> We don't want to carry it. <laughs> that's why marketing needs to help, right? Yeah, and that's does. where the two work hand in hand. Yeah. Let marketing do some of the listening. Let marketing do some of the content. Like Let marketing help you figure out who these people are on a regular basis. And let marketing do some of the influencer work as well. And then we'll be in a much better position in terms yeah. of a sales team. So if we circle back around, right, 12 steps of online research before anybody takes your call and or is willing to even talk to you, yeah. those 12 steps have to be strong. There needs to be compelling content in every bit of that, yeah. something that speaks to those people. Yeah. Not everyone is a f an effective influencer uh, internally and with their customers. But no. I, So I'm going to throw something out here weird yeah. because I, th I think you can, you can deal with it. How, how can we better align sales and marketing so that they understand what you just said? 
Well, the first thing is that a lot of salespeople, unfortunately, don't really understand marketing. Yeah. It's a very different thing, yeah. right? Think about it this way. So when I when we um, communicate with clients about marketing, we think of PR as your air cover, right? This is creating a lot of awareness with a lot of people very efficiently. So when you're in the newspaper or on TV or, or on the radio. We think of social media as the ground troops, right? Like making little, making small steps and moving everything forward in terms of, of getting to that yeah. target, yeah. right? Yeah. And then we think of email as like very specific, um, very specific like outposts, right? Like going out, setting something up and communicating with people yeah. on a regular basis. Well, that all has to be done in order for sales in order to like get as quickly as they can. And we think of sales, think of them as like the jets, like the high powered jets, right? Like the ones that are gonna get in there and get the job done, but only because they have air cover, right. they have ground troops, and they have outposts along the way that are gonna help them, yeah. right? But a lot of times, I think, some salespeople just say, oh, well, I'm the jet. I don't need ground troops. I don't need air cover. I don't need outposts. Like I'm a, I'm a rock star. I'm my own ma marketeer. Right. I'm, I'm an awesome salespeople. I don't need, I'm an awesome salesperson. I don't need that. Well, think about if we were all working together, how much more effective we would be. Well, and the, the sales leaders yeah. need to listen different too. So mm -hmm. that, 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 that communication is coordinated and mutual respect. Yes. It always seems the like there's step. tension. Yeah. 12 steps, right? 12 yeah. steps of online research. Yeah. Well, if we're doing our job as marketing, each one of those 12 steps are going to be awesome. So right. when they do take your call, they're going to be ready, more likely, to take that call, more likely to buy, more likely to refer somebody else to you. Yeah. That's awesome. Right. But they have to work together, yeah. especially as the people that we're selling to, they're getting younger and younger and younger and younger. That means we're getting older and older. I know. Older. Stop I know. talking right now. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But that's Please. the truth. Please. Did yeah. I, we might have covered this, but I want to make sure. Yeah. Um, what's the biggest mistakes that you see people doing, even that are kind of already established? Yeah. So we work with a lot of B2B middle market companies, right? They're, a lot of them have been around for a long time. Some of them are multi-generational. They're really smart people. They have successful businesses. But when we sit down and ask them to like really talk about their audiences, they don't know them. They really don't. And then when we ask them to prioritize them, they have the hardest time prioritizing. Wow. And so what Why? happens- Why? They're trying to think everything is equal? Everybody's important. I need to sell to everybody, right? <laughs> everybody matters. Everybody's important. I don't want them to think they're not important. Yeah. And that's fine, yeah. right? But, I mean, do you have unlimited time and money? Sure. Of course, right? We all do. We can all go after a lot of audiences. No, nobody has unlimited time and money, right? So if we're trying to go after all of these audiences with our marketing dollars all mm -hmm. at the same time, we're going to fail, because we're not going to create something that's like as, as targeted or as specific or as meaningful mm -hmm. to the people who are going to grow our businesses the fastest. Yeah. We're trying to communicate to everybody. And when we communicate with everybody, we really communicate with nobody. How do you slow them down? So How do you help them prioritize? Uh, well, we do persona exercises, which really help. We give their customers names. We give them pictures. Oh, we try awesome. to talk through them. And then we, ha we make them... We make them make choices. Yeah. Michael Porter, who is a strategy guru, yeah, yeah, says yeah. strategy is about making choices. Mm -hmm. If you make no choices, you have no strategy. So we really work with our clients to get them to make choices. Mm -hmm. Once they've identified their top two, we let them have two. We give them names, we, have them, we give pictures, and we constantly referring to who those people are. Mm -hmm. And then every year we throw it out and start again. It's like you're doing Shark Tank with them. A little bit. <laughs> you're really right? pushing back on them. Yeah, because yeah. you have to make choices. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no strategy. Well, when you're when you're deep in it, yep. This is why you come out and hire Slice. Because or any consultant, yeah. Because you're 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 uh, you're doing what you're doing best, and now you have to get a fresh perspective. Yeah, and companies that yeah. don't make choices are the ones that don't make it sometimes <laughs> or they just get stuck right yeah. they hit that ceiling they get yeah. stuck they can't move forward because they refuse to say this is the most important yeah a lot of times that happens out of fear mm -hmm. a lot of times it happens because the leadership team is not aligned yeah that's so they can't make choices yeah, yeah, yeah. and these are all things that are critical to the function yeah. of a business yeah i hear you right so if the business isn't functioning correctly the marketing's not going to function yeah. Well, and the sales probably aren't going to function all that well either. Yeah, it's all disconnected. But listen, 
We only have a couple more minutes. Yes. And I want you to tell us, you know, a little bit more about you, how you can, how you can help these, yeah. these folks and how they can get a hold of you so that they can hire you folks to be the, you know, the greatest they can be. Oh, thanks so much. You're welcome. So um, SliceCommunications.com mm -hmm. is our website. We're really easy to find. Mm -hmm. We're in Old City. Mm -hmm. um, we also host Social Media Day in Philadelphia every year, which ah. gets between five and 600 people. Wow. It's in June. We bring in speakers from LinkedIn and Twitter, from Adobe, IBM, The Knot, Porsche, Reebok, incredible speakers. Yep. And we encourage- Save the date. Save the date. Save the date. It's June 27th this year. It's awesome. a third Thursday. Awesome. We encourage people just to come out and interact with us there. You'll get a sense of who we are and mm -hmm. what we do. We're also releasing an ebook called A CEO's Guide to Confidence in Marketing. Yes. Yep, because we found that three in 10 CEOs have no confidence in their marketing strategy. Wow. And we think we know why. Wow. And we think we can help with that. I can't wait to read it. Yeah, so it should be really good. So that's another way to come and check us out and, and, see, and see how we think and how we work. That's awesome. One last question. Yes. Uh, what inspires you? Well, right now, my, my six-month-old, my yeah. daughter, Kaya, yeah. she's incredible. Um, she rocks my world and inspires me every day. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. Well, everybody, that was a great segment. I want to thank you so much. Thanks. You're amazing. Oh, you are too. So to meet the amazing Cassandra Bailey, you can get in touch with her at Slice Communications in Old City. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you next week. Peace of mind that everything will be all right. These are the moments that inspire us to do more than you'd ever expect from a car insurance company at a price that's less than you'd expect. This is more than just insurance. This is Plymouth Rock Assurance. Visit us at PlymouthRock.com.